Hi, this is Jim. This is my coming out story. The picture there is from uh, about the time that my uh, coming out story uh, uh, references. The late 70s, early 80s. Wasn't I cute? Anyway, it's one of the few pictures I have of myself from that time. I was born January 27th, 1959 in Portland, Oregon. I lived in a modest neighborhood and went to nice schools. My father worked in the lumber industry and my mother was a stay-at-home mom. I had an older brother and a sister. My earliest inclination that I was gay came from television. I can even remember seeing President Kennedy on TV and thinking he was attractive. I remember once stumbling across a men's bodybuilding competition on TV and even at the age of 9 or 10 getting an erection. Even as a child, I'm sure that I was outwardly gay and this did not go over well with my father. As a teenager, I listened to Broadway cast recordings and a chorus line was my favorite at that time. Instead of listening to headbanging music, songs of Broadway came from my room. One day, my father complained of my music and replied while a chorus line was playing away and said, God, that music! My response was, but Dad, it won the Pulitzer Prize. See, I was funny even back then. Despite having feelings for guys, I was, I was extremely repressed in my actual feelings as a kid. In seventh grade, I can remember getting bullied a lot. But as I grew up, I guess I blended in better, and it stopped. I kept myself ridiculously busy in school, in clubs, plays, student council, and even worked in the school cafeteria. Just once I was in a sport, track in the spring in 8th grade. I won the 220 yard dash once over a very hunky bunch of runners from other schools. I remember uh, in my school uh, there was a boy, real handsome, who took a liking to me uh, that was in track, but in my concentration I rebuffed him. Isn't that nuts? The thrill didn't last. In school athletic classes, I, I was always the last or next to the last one chosen for teams. I was repeatedly humiliated. It was a repetitively humiliating experience. In adolescence, I can recall my mother trying to play matchmaker. Usually, they were shapely girls with average looks, and, ex and they were extremely smart. They all were val valedictorians in the end, so my mother had some sense about her. But being matched with someone you are not interested in is the most disappointing experience of all. You don't want to hurt the other person's feelings, but you just don't feel it, you know? In high school, I got involved in music and discovered I could sing well. I was in groups and musicals. When I was just 16 years old, I adi auditioned for a posh German restaurant that featured strolling singers posing as waiters and bus staff. I got the job and did very well, earning big money. As a shy, average boy, I'm amazed that I could do this. It was my first experience of working with gay men. Nothing was really said, mind you, but you could tell we were of like minds and taste and entertainment. It was great fun, and I felt sophisticated. Accordionists who uh, played with us could memorize accompaniment by simply humming the tune to them a few times. I would have a girl join me, and we'd harmonize a and knock him dead in our songs. But in the midst of all this, I would occasionally be extremely sad, coming to work and crying in the men's room. One of the older guys tried to comfort me because he knew what my trouble was. But being only 16 and totally clueless, he could only help me so much. After about nine months, the owner of the restaurant got wind that almost all the guys were queer and were systematically fired for various reasons. I was taking singing lessons for my music teacher and had a lesson on my 18th birthday. I sang all the st standards, but I didn't know they were standards then. I just sang as I was told. Once I sang, love is a mini splendor thing. When I got to the part in the early mist to lovers kissed and the world stood still, I broke into uncontrollable tears. My teacher feared I was having trouble at home school or I was in love. It was none of these. I was just filled with expectations of what I thought I should be feeling on that day and I wasn't feeling it. 
I can remember having intense wet dreams, flying, flying, and meeting charming boys my age. Wet dreams are so embarrassing, and even then I didn't know what was happening. As you can see, clueless with a capital C, I was desperately trying to find my place, but I spent so much time not getting there that once it was right in front of me, I kind of couldn't even accept it. It was tough, really tough. Recently I had some clients, a family with grown kids. They were lovely people. One of the children was gay and seemingly single and things weren't said. I suddenly realized it was like seeing myself. The guy in the family that doesn't want to make waves, wants to blend in, yet the whole time is extremely uncomfortable and able to speak about his real feelings. He was adorable and I felt bad for him. I met my first guy when I was 21 years old in college. He was the handsomest man in the world to me. Charming, sophisticated, a little bitchy, and best of all, he was from California. We were both repressed, yet flamboyant queers, yet despite going to bed half a dozen times, we never even had sex. My God, is so pathetic. I remember the first time I spent the night with him. He was one of the few guys that had a room to himself, a single. I was in a sleeping bag on the floor, and we were talking in the dark. He invited me to join him into his bed, and all I can remember is that I physically trembled for nearly an hour. I wanted to be with him, but I was, it was almost I couldn't handle it. That is how repressed I was. However, I was lucky that my first gay man was so charming. We were in the vocal jazz ensemble, a great group with a great jazz vocal teacher. The two of us collected Singers Unlimited Records. That was a singing group. If you listen to those recordings today, it gives you just a hint of how innocent our love was. My singing interest continued. Prior to meeting my first man, I auditioned and was chosen to be in a Christian singing group, the Continental Singers, doing 90 concerts in the USA and South America. That was very big time at that time for someone young. My timing has always been a little off. By the time the concert series began, and I was to join all the other young Bible thumpers, I was coming out as gay to my friends. I guess where I grew up in the 1970s, the idea of a gay man was pretty far out. I experienced a lot of rejection everywhere and with everyone. Prior to taking the trip, I took a spring term off and got a job in a department store and then realized another great facet of gay life, cruising other men. Back in the 1970s, that was how Many gay men met other gay men. I was clueless at first, but as I made friends with other guys at the store and throughout the mall, I started to understand what made the gay world turn round. My friend John in men's sportswear would call me from the mall level and let me know that a cute guy was coming down the escalator to my floor. Sometimes I would step to the edge of my department and ask if he was finding what he was looking for. Can you believe it? Those were great times. When I went on my singing trip, I was faced with what I knew was homophobia, yet it, that word wasn't really used much then. And I had a hard time in the group, yet I was one of the best singers. We performed mostly in churches in California, New Mexico, Arizona, Texas, Oklahoma, and Louisiana, and all over Florida. I really enjoyed Florida. Occasionally young gay men, as well as fathers who were probably gay, approached me in a friendly way. Nothing ever happened, but there were many odd connections. I remember I was performing at the embassy, uh, the U.S. Embassy in Lima, Peru, and I was being cruised by a really cute guy in the audience and totally goofed up my number. After my, afterward, my director took my solo away and he did it himself for the rest of the tour. I remember once I was staying uh, with a missionary family in Quito, Ecuador, and uh, the mother uh, started telling me of the sins of homosexuality that was so prevalent in U.S. colleges. I kept thinking to myself, lady, how do you know this stuff? I'm gay and I don't even know it. I quickly learned that often you will be judged by people who know nothing of which they speak. By the time I came home and was staying with my folks for a while, my, my mother soon learned that I was gay by reading my love letters from my first boyfriend. These were sweet, innocent notes. She was very angry with me, and she let me know that she knew I was a pansy, and she, as she said, this really hurt me. 
She said I owed her. I owed her grandchildren. She accused me of prostituting myself, and from then on out, I stopped talking to her. My, what, my mother was an alcoholic and addicted to Valium. The combination made her increasingly unstable. After I moved out, I never went back. Almost 20 years later, I spoke to her briefly on her deathbed. In the early 1980s was a great recession in the Pacific Northwest, and I faced hard times finding work for several years. By the time I was working steady, in 1982, AIDS was discovered, and within two or three years, friends and acquaintances started dropping like flies. I remember at some point my mother called me and asked me if I had AIDS yet. I hung up on her. One time I met the nicest man. He was handsome, older, and just so sweet to me. I remember I went home with him one night, and afterwards, for two weeks, I wallpapered several of his rooms in his house. I really enjoyed this. I went on, this went on for about a month, and then one day he came home and said he quit his job. He had a great job. I couldn't figure it out. What happened was he was diagnosed with advanced stages of AIDS and had just a few months to live, but he didn't tell me this. I was in a fog. My friend was just silent. It had been sa I had been safe with him, but at the, that time, no one really understood how you got AIDS. Also, I hadn't seen someone die from it that close. At the time, you thought you could just beat it, but before you knew it, my friend disappeared. That is how it was then. If he died, he and all his stuff just disappeared. About 15 years later, his photo was framed, and it was on an entry console table at a hospice I went to. I nearly gasped at the sight of my dear friend Richard. Well, this is about the end, but I wanted to tell you one more thing that I almost forgot. Once, just once, I went on a real date with a girl. I really liked her. We re remembered the same things, and so we went to a movie. The weather was really bad that night. I suggested that we bag it. Then she got all emotional and started crying. You said we were going to a movie. So we went. The movie was Mommy Dearest. It had just released. I mean, what are the chances?